Well, hello. Welcome, everybody, to Seasons of Motherhood. We are on a new episode with Melinda Estabrooks, and I want to welcome you here and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Sandy. I'm so thrilled to finally do this with you, to be together in this way, right? Okay. I love seeing you in person, but (laughs) I also love the fact that we can take this interview and share it with other people because you have so much to share, so much life experience, and your journey that we're going to get into shortly is uh, really wonderful. And I don't think, of course, everybody has heard it. So I'm very excited to have you share uh, your story and your season of motherhood. So I'm just going to introduce you a little bit. And so for those of you who do not know Melinda, uh, Melinda is a host, showrunner, and executive producer of the women's talk show, See, Here Love, which is phenomenal. You need to check it out. We're going to have the links for you. Um, It's in its ninth season, going into its 10th, which is incredible, Melinda. Congratulations. This is a big year. 10. It is huge. Thank you. Thank you. Um, This community values bringing women and others together. And um, you, it's beautiful with the storytelling, which I've been a part of, and I've been able to watch in the audience as well as and chat with you on, on the stage as well. Um, mm-hmm. All of, about faith in Christ. Um, yeah. You are also the author and curator of a book called Always Know, which I have right here, which is fantastic. Ooh, thank you. Another Sam. one you need to pick up, everybody. <laughs> um, it's a collection of stories from different women across the country, which is beautiful. Um, a lot of the guests that have been on See Her Love contributed to this as well. Um, so for the past 25 years, can you believe that? 25 years. No, I've no. worked in broadcasting and journalism, PR and marketing, leadership facilitation, advocacy, fundraising, motivational speaking around the world. Melinda, you're doing it all. <laughs> <laughs> you are also a wife to Chris, stepmom to two lovely young adults. Um, and you love traveling, connecting with women everywhere. And I love what you say. Today is not your forever. So we'll talk a little bit more about that too. But yeah, so you are really just bringing (laughs) the world together on this Mm -hmm. stage of See, Here Love. And it is beautiful. And just to have that opportunity to chat with other women and share their stories, because that's what this is all about, is sharing stories to learn from other people. And that is the most important part of sharing Mm -hmm. your story, because you learn, you gain insight and you gain wisdom. So... Maybe what we're going to do is go right back to kind of your earlier beginnings of your faith journey. Mm. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that first. Wow. I mean, the faith journey really begins with my my parents. So yeah. my parents, uh, my adopted parents are Canadian uh, from London, Ontario, Canada. And they felt the call of God to leave everything very comfortably in Canada to go and be missionaries to share the gospel good news over the radio in the philippines it's a beautiful story of courage of opposition from people going why would you go leave the comforts of home to go to the philippines Mm -hmm. they went their heart was broken as they saw the need of those that were impoverished especially young girls at the time Mm -hmm. and they decided to uh adopt a filipino baby and that happened to be me and that story is is longer and and we don't have the time, but it was just God orchestrating in such a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. Uh, This redemption started my birth mother, Dory, who was a teenager when she got pregnant with me. And uh, a friend had told her about the Abiertus House of Friendship, which is a a home for unwed mothers to, Mm -hmm. to give up their baby for adoption there. And it just so happened that my mom and dad had a friend who knew about this um, Abiertus House of Friendship connected them to it. I was born the same week that they wanted to adopt a baby. It, it really is. Mm-hmm. And so my life from the beginning, Sandy, if you're talking about a faith journey, was really there. Mm-hmm. It was the the faith of, of two young 30-something uh, Canadians who went over to Canada. It was the courage of Dory at 18 to give me up. And then uh, all through my life, I think that sense of being adopted, uh, my name when they adopted me was Baby. I had no name. They named me and that really connected with me as far as in my my relationship with God. So really at an early age, even as a baby, there was definitely God in the midst of it. And so grew up in the Philippines and Singapore. My dad eventually transitioned from radio broadcasting to 
Bible smuggling, and our family became Bible smugglers. Such into, a great party for story. I know, really, into into uh, communist China in the day and the former Soviet Union, and we would smuggle Bibles into the country through plane, train, and automobile, mm -hmm. and we would deliver our Bibles to the persecuted church. And so my my life was also really informed by uh, this love of the word of God, because yeah. I would see as a young child, people weeping when they would receive a Bible, which I took so for granted as a kid, because I had all these like, Sunday school Bibles. And I'm like, why are you guys weeping? Why, mom, dad, yeah. why are they crying? No, and they would say, I think we all do. That's it's yeah. a very common reaction yes. where we live, yes. taking for granted we might have five or 10 Bibles. Oh, and these people would take the Bible, rip the pages, memorize chapters upon chapters, and, and then share that wow. page with another person. So when I would meet with some of these these persecuted Christians, they would have wow. like the book of Matthew memorized, book of John memorized. Wow. And I realized at a young age, wow, there's power in this book. Mm -hmm. People believe in it, will die for it because they believe it's life giving, it's transformational, it's truth. Yeah. So I grew up with that. And my whole life was just uh, just a wonder of God's work. And yeah. then when I came to Canada, it was grade eight, I was 13 and, and it was rough. It was, it was mm -hmm. a, a time, uh, the area of Canada, which is outside of Toronto, wasn't as diverse, uh, in that time. And so I felt very isolated. I didn't feel represented. And because of that, I was like trying to find my ways to appease pain and fear and loneliness mm -hmm. by drinking drugs and everything else and and running away from God and I call that the prodigal years like I really was like I don't know if I even believe in this church thing it's no fun not right. into it and ran away so fast forward after you know I trying to take my own life some abusive relationships and pain uh thankfully I had beautiful parents faithful parents mm -hmm. who loved Jesus who believed in the power of prayer and prayed for me, it's so emotional, every night that I would not die, that one day I'd come back home. Wow. And, you know, see, and I say this to parents, like your kid could be 50, your kid could, kid could be 60, 15, mm -hmm. 20. Mm -hmm. And I say over and over again, just keep praying. Yeah. God Don't hears stop. the prayers. Don't stop. And, and my parents, you know, were wise in that they realized that it might not be them to bring me home. So they started praying that others would yeah would along my journey call me home. The Starbucks barista, the gas, yeah. you know, the gas attendant, a teacher, anybody. And over the course of my prodigal years, it was unbelievable. The people that randomly would say something that it would it would remind me of, of the love of God, somebody, a song, like so many things. So God's at work any anyhow, anywhere. And it's I believe it's beautiful. It, yeah, yeah it was, it was we can pray the way we think we want to pray, but God's actually saying, you know what? <laughs> you need to open yourself to be hearing yes. from me, to know how to pray well for your children. And yes. it won't be you necessarily, but your parents chose to set that stage, to have that firm foundation on Christ, which was embedded in you, much like me, embedded in me. Yeah. And if it weren't for other people though, and that's the beautiful part of the community of God. Yes. Um, yes, absolutely. And they pray. And I, I, I said to my parents, that was so wise. And they said it was, I think somebody from the church that told them, like, if it's not going to be you, then pray that it'll be mm -hmm. somebody else. And they were like, oh, we never thought like, of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. And not to say that, like, obviously they didn't care for me, love me, but sometimes a kid will not listen to their parents. No, they will listen to somebody sure. else. You can say the same thing somebody else says, and they'll listen to that person and go, oh, this person yeah. said this. And like, I just told you that yesterday, you know? Yeah. And they're like, no. like, no, 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 I heard it from somebody else. <laughs> it's almost like it's a validation of the need to hear something over and over and yes. over again. It's like I 100%. remember talking to a friend not too long ago where she just said she loves being able to go to church every week to hear the gospel again. And again, because you can never hear it enough. You always need to be reminded of who Christ is and what he has done for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so they kept praying and through, you know, a bit of trauma and some really tough situations and the forgiveness of my parents, I found my way home. And, you know, one part, it was like we said, Sandy, multiple people, but one part of just finally coming back, um, I'd run away from home. I was desperate. 
and a youth pastor friend of mine who is still my friend to this day, one of my longest, longest friends, mm -hmm. picked me up, said, listen, your mom called. They're looking for you. You've run away again. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do, but I want you to listen to the song. And he put in a tape. This is how mm -hmm. old I am. He put in a tape. <laughs> That's okay. We're both sharing that same. Exactly. Genre. Yeah. It was Stephen Curtis Chapman. Mm -hmm. Don't let the fire die. I can mm -hmm. still see the light of like Christ in your eyes. Don't let the fire die. Wow. And I was sitting in the car and I just start bawling because it was this, my whole life. I'm like, I'm disqualified. I've messed up. How can mm -hmm. God love me? How can the church love me? How can I even call myself a Christian? Right. And this so song true. comes on and says, oh no, <laughs> there is still a fire in you. Don't let it die. There's still a fire in you. God sees it. He's yeah. not done with you yet. Yeah. And that was a turning point um, in my faith journey to say, okay, I am exhausted. I've run mm -hmm. so long and mm -hmm. so hard. And I, my, I, my body, mind, and soul are just like yeah. burnt. You were and like at that point now. of, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's time now to pursue the things of God. Yeah. I was probably by my mid mid to mid 20s when i really was like okay i'm done yeah i'm done running it's wow. time mm -hmm. that's beautiful i think mm -hmm. that that is such an encouragement because i know that there are a lot of moms that will be watching right now that are in the middle of what your parents were just praying and praying and praying and god has a plan he's not done writing the story of any one of our kids let alone that's our right. story um and we're called to be faithful and so your parents being such great mentors to you and examples of faith that was real, genuine, authentic, relatable. And then you took that into your own journey and mm -hmm. faith came alive and Christ came alive. And I think that's probably where you ended up starting your 25 career year career. You started, it started to unfold. There it is. Hey, you. Thank you for, thank you for piecing that together, Sandy. Actually, as you say that, I'm like, oh, that's obvious. Yes. As soon yeah. as I said yes, mm -hmm. it was like it came together. I'm not. It, I, I, it just it, like things opened. It was like God was like, yeah. finally, okay. Now I'm going to reveal right. next steps. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open things up. And not to say mm -hmm. there hasn't been struggle, but you're. That's actually such a great point you said. I, yeah. that, it's weird. That's an aha moment for me. Yeah. It was like boom. It opened up, and I was like, how did I get here at this job that I'm not qualified for? Yeah. Uh, like I said yes, but I, I said yeah, but I didn't know. <laughs> exactly. And you're right. It just, it, then the career opened up and it was really aligned with my passions, with what my heart was saying about how I love story, the marginalized, mm -hmm. wanting to bring voice to those that don't and don't have an opportunity. And now right. I just see that 25 years later, mm -hmm. this is yeah. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. No, it's really neat. I think I actually forgot to mention our connection at the beginning that we have met, we met in high school. Yes, and, we did. Um, so we, we've known each other for a very long time. And I think actually in that early part of your career, that's where we started to find each other. Oh, you're at this event. Oh, mm -hmm. like, like I remember very specifically just kind of seeing you all through the years. And, and here we are today. Um, dear friends just had dinner the other yeah, night. Grateful. Praying for one another. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just love what God does with a family of God. It's it, so beautiful. Yeah. And you know, Sandy, I want to say that when people ask me all the time, why should I follow Jesus? Mm. You know, one of the big things is I say, it's about this community of God yeah. that I can't even explain. You can have friends, you can have okay. your, your fun friends that, you know, but yeah. there's deeply mm -hmm. connected with God in the family of God, a deep yeah. spiritual connection and prayer and understanding and showing up that yeah. I haven't seen anywhere else really happen in the world yeah. in the way that it is as, as yeah. believers. Yeah, you know, for sure. Even when you were um, that very significant health journey that you experienced um, a year ago, a year, yeah. year and a half now. Yeah, right? a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, just, I love the beauty of how your husband, Chris, was so willing to just go, you know what, guys, I need help. Amazing. And then I'm like, ah, this is so beautiful. It was like, let's run. So everybody's like, okay, food's on the doorstep, food's on the doorstep, food's on the doorstep. Just the little things because there's only so much we can do. Can't be there in the hospital room, can't be there necessarily by your bedside, but we are Christ's hands and feet. And I saw that repeatedly too in my life when I was injured, surgery, people bringing me a coffee, bringing me food. And it is the family of God laying aside their own needs and just coming before the Lord saying, okay, what can I do? 
I can cook, I can get soup, I can do this, and nothing is too small. And no, I know and that, I think, was, that, that was yeah. beautiful, brutal, and beautiful yeah. opportunity. Isn't that interesting? It's like, it's the duality of life, right? The brutal and beauty of it life. Is. And yeah. I say this to you know, as we're talking in this about motherhood, I know we're gonna get into blended yeah. family, but imagine if we showed up, like when mothers are distressed, when people are like overwhelmed, mm -hmm. imagine if we all showed up yeah. in that place of care, comfort, willing to take the kids, do whatever we can to help yeah. one another. And I think over and over, like the message I say a lot of times when I'm speaking at women's conferences for the past 25 years, mm -hmm. it's like, we are the answer to prayers, you guys. Every time you yes. get a sense, <laughs> you're like, I should do this. It's like, that's pro that's most likely the Holy Spirit, God saying, go be the answer to prayer for somebody. Absolutely. And many times that we missed it, let's not miss it. Yeah. And it's like, let's respond and answer that because there's somebody, a mother, somebody who's desperate calling out and God's like, okay, I'm gonna make sure that that's yeah. connected. And mm -hmm. so I feel more and more as I get older to respond to those promptings. Yes, and you know, it's interesting for me, and I'm sure you feel the same way, when you've ignored the prompting, <laughs> oh, and you're just like, why? I, I sensed it, and I yeah. thought the Holy Spirit was moving in. I just decided, no. And then it's like, mm -hmm. okay, next time, that's it. I'm not saying you, and it's almost like a reminder, okay, I'm saying yes, I'm not going to miss out on being blessed and blessing others just right. because of some sort of selfish moment. But I I can think back to many times where I just was like, you know what, I can't do that. I can't. And I didn't say yes. I know. But I'm sure you I get, get it. it. So I'm like, <laughs> oh. And now it's more like and, and the thing is, even if it's not like a hundred percent, I'm still like, I'm still gonna go. Yeah. Because even if it's like 70% in the sense of like, was it God? But it's like, you know what? God is always about love and care mm -hmm. for others. And so it's like, anytime I'm doing that, I'm like, it mm -hmm. is of God. And it's just, it's just directing people. It's, it's like in the verses, you know, I do these things, the good deed, so that it will point to my father in heaven. And that's what I want it to do. Not me, but mm -hmm. that it is, it is the love of God being shown through me yeah. to bless and love you. Yeah. It's a scary guess because you don't know the next step. You don't know the outcome. You're just kind of going, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm going to say yes. And right. then you go, okay, Lord, but if I'm saying yes, then equip me, help me, right. walk with me. And he's never going to leave you. He's never going to Every day. You. Right. He is with Every you. He's single yesterday, day. today, and tomorrow. And it's it's a faith journey. Yes. 100% every yes. single day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your journey into um, to motherhood, I think there's going to be a lot of people watching that will be um, saying, yeah, that's me. So you have ended up in a blended family, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. definitely an unexpected turn in your life. But God brought along your husband, Chris, at just the right time for such a time as this. And he has made you both stronger for the kingdom and the work that he's doing in both of you and, and your two kids. So maybe talk a little bit about yeah. your, your family and your blended life that you're experiencing right mm. now. So this is an interesting question, especially as we're talking about motherhood, because in all honesty and transparency and vulnerability, all throughout my life, I never wanted to be a mom. I never wanted to have children. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered like, what was that? And I was like, well, maybe I'm just focused on uh, my career. And after all of like the things I'd been through, it's like, I just want to get my, my life right mm -hmm. and, and focus. And so I'm like, I, I don't ever want to be a mom. God, right. I know my life. I know what's best for me. Yeah. I don't want to be a mom. And, <laughs> and, and, and it's, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it's interesting because, you know, it didn't happen. I, you know, I was married before and we chose not to have children. Uh, it was a very public divorce, uh, devastating, mm -hmm. and then was sort of like open. And this is where the God part comes in. <laughs> because there's a lot of times we go, this is what I want. This is the man I want. This is the life I want. It's going to look like this. Number right. one, number two, number three, check, number four, check, number check. five. Check, check. Thank you, God. Please answer my prayer for these right. very specific things that I know are best mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Well, one of those things was if I decide to have another relationship, I would like no kids. I would like, you know, like not a pastor or a worship leader or anybody involved in church. I would mm -hmm. like, you know, a five foot, um, like a six foot five guy. Like I'm not even, I was so specific. 
best. And I'm okay. I'm so embarrassed to say this now, Sandy, because when I read it, I'm so <laughs> embarrassed. Again, I think there's way more people watching that relate to that. Trust me. Here's my list. And God, thank you very much. Please answer. There was mm-hmm. no conversation about God. What do you think? It was like, no, this is my demand list. Right. Well, here's the thing. Uh, meeting Chris is exactly every point that I gave to God is exactly opposite than what I said. So when I met Chris, he was a pastor. He was a worship leader. He's he's under six foot. He's not a, even a stocky guy. He's more of a slim guy. He's an introvert. And he had two children. Oh like, my God, this is not what I ordered. <laughs> yeah. God, that's you're not answering the yeah. prayer correctly. Um, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Time out, God. We've made a mistake. Uh, let's reframe, yeah. pivot. Let's try again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, we're coming up to eight years of marriage, um, dated for a few years just because we were like, it's important second time getting married. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, we know the stats of second time marriages. If you don't deal with the things before, which are even greater than 50% of divorces in second yeah. marriages, thirds, etc. Mm-hmm. So we did really hard work of Christian therapy and counseling and meeting with mentors to just say, you know, getting married a second time, especially me going to a blended family, mm-hmm. I want to be best prepared. It's so and, wise. And, yeah, and met with mentors. And it was, and I'm telling you, and I and I know that there might be women listening, because sometimes I'll just be honest. After being abandoned and rejected and in pain, mm-hmm. there are times where many women that I know have jumped right into another relationship without yeah. doing the hard work of right. heart work. God, what what are areas in my life that I need to work on? Mm-hmm. What's my motivation to get into this relationship so quickly? Yeah. And so I was really, really uh, mentored wisely to just take the oh, time good. and 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 work this out and figure out. Because here's the thing, Sandy. In all honesty, when Chris's marriage ended, there was some pain involved in that that he had to work through on his side. Of course. And 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 we had to. I had to say. I need you to work on that because you can't bring that pain into our marriage without you yeah. through it, without prayer, without guys mentoring you yeah. through it, because that bringing that into the marriage will be harmful. For yeah. me, feeling abandoned, rejected, and then kind of putting walls up because I don't want that to happen again is also not something that's not good to bring into a second no. marriage because then I'll always have my like walls up. Perfect storm is on yes. the horizon. And yes. you kind of know it, but you don't want to do the hard work because this is yes. like the time that you spent preparing for marriage. Oh, I find today it's almost a lost art. And I'm so wise that you did that because look where it brought you. Right. Yeah. And we had, there were children involved. Mm-hmm. And again, we didn't want to bring, you know, Chris's kids into a relationship that I'll be honest, where we were having it and then it failed and they kind of mm-hmm. had connected with me or they come into an, another situation where it it's it's chaotic and we haven't figured things out. And mm-hmm. so all I'm saying is just for your, you know, viewer and listener, it is really important to do the hard work, especially going yeah. into a second marriage. And I'm glad we did it. A lot of people were like, you guys should just hurry it up. It's like, no, we need no. to do. And Christian counseling helped us because they were like, you know, if we want this to be foundational on on God, and we have to work hard at, at, at these things. And it's going to mean having to change some some thinking and and the way that we have thought about ourselves. And so, doing the hard work, and I now have two kids. <laughs> and it was interesting, Sandy, because I was really actually you know afraid. I didn't know if I could be a mom. I didn't know if I could mentor well. And I I was like I don't know if I want this because I've been able to live very quite self serving and focused. Yeah. And I would yeah. tell you something, blended family has changed me. Mm. Uh, children, like all mothers know, they bring out the best and the worst and and the like you laying of one patience, self. You know, yeah, you exactly. You were kind. <laughs> yeah, no. And laying of oneself down for another yeah. person fully is all of that. And so it was interesting. I, you know, I was actually, it was hard navigating beginnings. I didn't know. But then it was like, God kept saying to me, you will learn a lot from them as they learn from you. Yeah. You will learn a lot about love and care and compassion and kindness, mm-hmm. entering and speaking life, sharing about yeah. Jesus. Yeah. You will yeah. learn things about building family that you never did 
really on your own. And yeah. so it has been a journey. It's not been easy, Sandy. No. Blended family has so many unique complexities because you have- So many layers, right? Oh, you have other, you know, in-laws, families, and, and like four, you know, three, four grandparents and yeah. expectations and values, different yeah. values. And- Well, because they were raised differently than maybe if you had raised them right from the beginning. So you right. kind of met them partway into their life. So all of a sudden they have to adapt. Chris yeah. has to adapt. You have to yeah. adapt. So it becomes, exactly. it almost has to become this home of grace. Okay. Yes. We're all coming from different places, but we're going to meet in the middle. Christ is the center. We're going to do this together. And I've seen you do that. I've seen you work so hard. Um, just like I know many moms will relate. You work really hard at keeping your family united and at peace and together. And you've done that. You're working at it even now. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, it, you know, as people know that are in blended families, I mean, you've got exes mm -hmm. and their expectations yeah. and, yeah. and how to raise kids and coordinate mm -hmm. schedules and driving schedules and mm -hmm it's not easy and so there's been a lot of prayer there's been a lot of choices to say we're going to speak kindly we're going to be kind right you know we do a lot for the for the kids for their sake and it's it's like putting down like your rights mm -hmm. to say what's mm -hmm. better for the family the bigger picture and that was huge and i'll be honest that was huge for me because oh, i can yeah. as a single person i was just like living my life what rights i have every right to do whatever i want yeah. i can just do whatever i want yeah and then all of a sudden i'm coming into a blended family situation I'm like oh oh no that's mm -hmm. not what that is but there's something really beautiful about it it's hard mm -hmm. but i have learned as a woman i have felt stronger uh even closer to jesus because mm -hmm. of becoming a mother in this way yeah. because what would of you what say means. to somebody that um what kind of encouragement could you give to somebody who's in or maybe just beginning the journey of a blended family and now that you have all this experience what what could you possibly say to just some wisdom and encouragement for a mom today i say pray i've done chris and i've prayed a lot there are times where it's like there are no words we just pray and and chris and i pray together of course I pray by myself but praying with your spouse for your exes mm. for the other family units has changed yeah. everything so good. it has changed everything mm -hmm. always speaking kindly as much as you can be raging and upset at situations or decisions yeah. we have chosen to speak kindly lovingly as best as we can mm -hmm. not to say we don't have boundaries and truth telling and expectations but we have chosen for the sake of ourselves mm -hmm. and our kids who are watching us and we're modeling good yeah. behavior is yeah. to never speak unkind of an ex, but to always speak well. Mm -hmm. And that's been a big thing. And then also just open communication. It's been interesting, like exes and different people, we've had actually quite open communication mm -hmm. and we try our best to be a, a, a bigger blended family. Right. So we do go right. to things together, but prayer, open communication, lovingly and kindly speaking, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a well of one another has been the key. Yeah. It really has been in all of it. Yeah. You know, we all have dysfunction. We all have brokenness, right? And so what you're modeling for your family is that God takes the broken and he pieces it back together in his time and in his way. And that's what he's been doing for your family. And is it easy? No, nope. no child is easy to raise. I wasn't easy to raise. I was feisty. I had my own little stubborn ways, you know? But the power of grandparents is 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 life-changing and I think what you're doing is you're just modeling for your kids that you know what you didn't ask for this you didn't plan for this but God's going to use it mm -hmm. and he's going to bless you so let's get into a little bit of see here love because there's so much coming up you have your 10th season which is very exciting so maybe you can share I don't know, a little bit of tidbit of what's coming up what you expect to give us a little bit of uh excitement for the new season Wow, you're really getting in there because I haven't shared this with anybody. I don't even know if my Ooh, team knows. I love it. First time here. All the information. So you're right, 10 seasons, I have to be like, exhale. Yes. Because where God has taken us in from a little web show all the way into a broadcast show and podcast and YouTube mm -hmm. show and all of that, it's just amazing. And again, it's like when you let God kind of take the wheel and you're like, okay. He said yes. Like, yeah. He will take you to places you never thought. I honestly never thought 25 that I would be here today. 
So, uh, you know, we're wrapping up season nine and that's been exciting mm. because we did some really hard topics like, you know, perimenopause and menopause and grief and sorrow mm -hmm. and, and then, uh, you know, Bible study series mm -hmm. on unknown women of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And what we found Sandy, which is, I, which is really tying into season 10 is that we have found, and this is just up your alley that women love getting deep into the scriptures. Mm -hmm hearing the stories in the scriptures of God's faithfulness and how God worked through the ages and, and mm -hmm. how Jesus lived and loved. And so mm -hmm. the Bible study has just gone, you know, this is our second Bible study. And so we are actually gonna do more Bible studies in season 10. Uh, we are gonna celebrate. We've heard that we have to do a bunch of parties. You have to. It's yeah, just we, a requirement. <laughs> right, we've also heard that we need to go across Canada and maybe do a few parties across Canada because my heart is for Canadian women. And Canadian women, our, our nation is vast. Mm -hmm. And so we have lots of land that we need to crisscross, but the voices of Canadian women are strong mm -hmm. and powerful yes. and they're serving Jesus in incredibly beautiful, courageous yes. ways. And so, mm -hmm. you know, my heart again, like you said earlier when we started, you know, to amplify Verse voices to connect women through their stories so that mm -hmm. we don't feel alone. Mm -hmm. And that's my hope for season 10. And, and I mean, I, but then from there, I'm like, I don't know, God, yeah. how you want to do this, the women you want to, you know, amplify. I am just, again, I've said this for the show. I may be the host and executive producer, Sandy, but this is God's show. I mm -hmm. feel like I am just a yeah. steward of this yeah. gift to see her love he's given me. So that's what's happening that. season 10, not too specific, but gives you a little bit of a, inside but Perfect. again just Perfect. keeping keeping going on what yeah. we've already we yeah. already yeah. well i want to encourage women that are watching right now you do need to go onto the see here love site and prepare for the new one that's coming up for the unknown women of the bible mm -hmm. um so friends we were able to sit in the audience and we were able yes. to, like a first row seat of this beautiful conversation between a variety of different women that each took a segment of um the bible study and then we're teaching it but the beautiful thing was just sitting around the table, it models what the women at home can do. Just yes. get your Bible open, sit around the table, doesn't have to be complicated, and read what God says about these women and then have fun digging in to a commentary, have fun digging in online and, and seeing actually the historical context. And so I wanna encourage women to, I know you did, it was Philippians, right? The, the Philippians three, was, yeah, the first, yeah. the first Bible study series. And then this one was, 10 different women from right. Shifra and JL all the way to Shira Amazing. and um, uh, Holga and Terza, like all across the yeah. board, incredible Amazing. women. And women. I just think women need to know how prominent women are in the Bible and how much Jesus loves women in the Bible and today and yes. women and it's beautiful. So go to See Her Love and download the Bible study so that you yeah. can follow along um, with each of the teachings because they'll have like subs, uh, teachings that follow the downloads right so that's right yeah. thanks Sandy. yes i'm yeah. excited too i'm excited for yeah. women last year we had women all the way from malaysia and around the world engage with the study and like you said it's the same as with your books a lot of times we can read it by ourselves with the power of opening up scripture and talking about it together in community absolutely is powerful and it should be that's it okay. should be taught that way and spoken about within community mm -hmm. with friends mm -hmm. hearing mm -hmm. ideas and thoughts and what god is doing mm -hmm. yes absolutely well you know what this has been a delight thank you so much for taking time to come on to the seasons of motherhood series and share your journey of motherhood as well as your work journey and see her love and just the balance of motherhood and work it's it's tough but you're doing it and i know you're really leaning into god for everything so thank you for the example you are and the inspiration and encouragement to me personally and to women that you'll probably never meet around the world uh, because you said yes. So thank you for modeling oh. faith stuff. It's beautiful. So thank, thank you for your friendship. And I'm excited oh. to see what happens with See Here Love season 10 and all of the parties. I'll, I'll thank you. And you will crazy. definitely be a part of the parties. You know that. <laughs> Sandy, honestly, what a privilege. And I just want to say this mm -hmm. to see us where we are now, mm -hmm. it, it actually makes me emotional. Uh, I've almost teared up here. People. You know, because <laughs> if, if people had seen us before, they would have maybe written us off and thought there's no way. And here okay. we are so many years later doing the work of God, serving mm -hmm. him. I'm so proud of you. And what a privilege and honor it is to be speaking with you, but also to mm -hmm. be your friend. So thank you so much for this. Well, time. all the glory goes to God because he knew 
we would be here today and sharing this encouragement with other people and with one another. So it's it's amazing. I love what God does. He's always full of surprises. <laughs> Definitely is. Thank yeah. you so much. All right. Take care. Have a great day. We'll talk soon. Okay. You too. Bye.